renowned journalist Arshad Sharif's funeral prayers will be offered at Shah Faisal Mosque in the federal capital today. His mother confirmed in a video message that the funeral prayers would be offered at Faisal Mosque at 2 p.m. Meanwhile, new details have emerged following the death of Arshad Sharif allegedly at the hands of Kenyan police, deepening the mystery around his death. Nation Media Group of Kenya published a story sharing the journalist and Khurram Ahmed spent Sunday afternoon at an entertainment complex that also has a shooting range. The report noted contradictory versions of police that earlier claimed the journalist and Khurram Ahmed defied orders at a checkpoint, but later alleged Ahmed shot at one officer and injured him. Another Kenyan investigative journalist, Brian Obuya, said that fatal shot that killed Sharif was fired with precision through the rear mirror of the car. Former Nairobi governor Mike Sonko, however, offended Kenyan police saying they were tricked into shooting that Pakistani national, thinking he was involved in vehicle theft. Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf has suspended basic membership of Faisal Wabda following his presser where he claimed that there would be bloodshed during the long march beginning from October 28th. The party has issued a show cause notice to Faisal Wabda over damaging party's planned long march towards capital and directed him to clarify his position within two days. Wabda has claimed that the PTI's upcoming long march to Islamabad would be a bloody one with bodies falling and the deaths of innocent people. He alleged that this too was a part of a conspiracy like the one to kill Arshad Sharif. Faisal Wafda also claimed that the journalist Arshad Sharif's murder was pre-planned and conspired in Pakistan and vowed to reveal the truth behind his killing. The PTI leader, however, said that he won't name the people involved in the crime, adding that he has made a video mentioning the names of those involved in the conspiracy. Kashmiris across the globe are observing a black day over the completion of 75 years of Indian occupation of the territory. President Arif Alvi and Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif in their messages have reaffirmed Pakistan's unwavering support of the Kashmiris' just struggle for their inalienable right to self-determination. Dr. Arif Alvi reiterated Pakistan's call for an immediate reversal of the Indian government's illegal and unilateral actions of August 5th. 2019. He urged the international community to take practical steps to hold India accountable for its egregious human rights violations in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has said, Pakistan will always stand by the people of Kashmir, no matter what the cost is, and it will not rest till Kashmiris secure their legitimate right to self-determination. He said Pakistan's rock-solid support to the Kashmir cause remains as steadfast as ever. Hyderabad is likely to be the hottest city of Pakistan by 2100 with the highest average temperature reaching 29.9 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius followed by Jacobabad, Bhawalnagar and Bhawalpur cities. The findings have been shared by a report from United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. It highlighted that in South Asia, extreme climatic conditions are threatening food security. Thus, agro-based economies such as those of India and Pakistan are the most vulnerable to climate change. It shared that by the end of the century, South Asia will have more intense heat waves of longer durations and occurring at a higher frequency, particularly in India and Pakistan. The UN report said three Asian megacities, Delhi, Karachi and Kolkata, are top on the list of the cities exposed to drought risk because of the heat waves.